Hey Juan, what's good? Yeah, it's good. good. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for flying down. Yeah. Um, you know, we can just get into a little bit. You know, I just, I actually, I like doing this show not just like to get this, but also like I've been noticing that when I have people over and just talk to them, and they're like all my friends, like people I've known for a bit. Yeah, you learn a little more, but also realized I don't talk to you about certain aspects like job or what is it or how you got your job like to a certain extent yeah because i mean when we were in college in an iv like i probably would have known way more about like how you got your job or like what you're doing tomorrow and what you did three days ago but like right. nowadays i don't see people even people in la i don't see them every day so it's like yeah when we hang out we're drinking we're hanging out so i'm not gonna be like so how did you get your job or i mean sometimes but yeah so that's why i realized how like doing this show like yeah. allows me to like get to know them in a different way and talk to people and even you who i've you know seen and hang out with countless of times now like right there's things that i probably didn't know about your job that because like I'm not asking you everything so, you know what's your job what do you do so my job title is a behavioral health technician and basically I'm just like supporting students who have autism mm -hmm. um, who are on the spectrum. I work at an elementary school because I guess the student that I'm assigned to goes to that elementary school. So yeah like technically like I'm assigned to like one student but like oh, in the classroom in the classroom like I'm just like helping out the whole classroom you know like not a very I guess well supported field so it's like almost impossible to solely focus on like, I guess what's necessarily in my job description, right. you know? So wait, so if you're assigned one student, so say there's 10 people in the grade, are all 10, do they all have special needs or is it just like a few within the grade? No, so- um, And you're assigned to like- Well, it's like a traditional elementary school and like there are special ed classrooms. There are two special ed classrooms and I'm in the older one. The elementary school is like K through five and my my student's a fifth grader. So I'm in the third through fifth special education classroom. And then there's like a K through two. So the, within the three to five, how, well, I guess how many students All of them are, are on the spectrum. Oh, all of them. Oh, cause it's a special needs right. class. Right, all of them are on the spectrum, um, but not all of them have a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, oh. right. So like, I'm not necessarily a district employee. Like, um, I work for like an outside company that oh, works. Oh, you're a third party. Right. That works co and co with the elementary oh, school. Cool. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. I don't work at the school, but like. But yeah. You're not faculty essentially. Like you're not really a faculty right, member. Right. But like. I mean, you, I am because like I only work there, you know, I'm basically a staff member, but I'm not. Do each of those kids in the, oh wait, no, you said. Only some are assigned. Right. Some are assigned. So some are just kind so of only, students there. Um, so only are. students that need a one-on-one -on -one have like very like, like I guess like more, more severe cases, more severe behaviors. So like they need that like wow. constant one-on-one. -on -one. And like the behaviors can vary between like one student is like has an anger issue. You know, like he gets very triggered very easily. He needs that support constantly. Wow. So you're in charge of that. Right, kid but that's that like has a more of a special need. There's a student he like has a helmet on all the time. Mm, oh my god, really? A helmet? Like, Damn. And it's because um he has, he has seizures during so, like, class. Yeah, he has like seizures. He has like a very very like rare chromosomal disorder. Is that the student you're assigned to? No, but I babysat him in <laughs> the summer. Oh no way. Yeah. Anyway, and you're pretty much assigned to him too if you're in the class. Right. There's a lot of other staff members in the classroom, okay. but he specifically needs to have someone with him at all times. And sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. It just kind of depends. But yeah, depending on like the severity of their, I guess, behavior or like how much attention they need, like it can be two spectrums, you know, like one student like has a very bad anger issue versus like the kid who just needs that attention that's having seizures all the time, you know? So yeah. like it can just like vary, but not every kid needs a one-on-one. -on -one. Dang, that's crazy. So you're not giving lessons on like subjects or anything i'm not giving lessons i'm just providing support for the students in the classroom okay so as far as job function i guess or you know your day-to-day -day, like i'm just curious because like you don't you're not teaching math or you know whatever to these kids you're providing support so what are you doing like are you just like watching what's my day-to-day -day? so like yeah. yeah so like i'll go into the classroom we have breakfast the students have breakfast and then we go into our schedule
schedules, the teachers will assign like a staff member to a student or another student in addition to, you know, do their subject activity. So like for reading, they'll read a book, we'll help them read the book, writing, math, you know, all of that. Um, and then you just follow that throughout the day. There's like a lesson plan assigned by the teacher that we just help implement throughout with the students and just help support them. Cause like there's only so much that they can do slash like learn. So like you're just kind of there to like. I see, that makes sense. Okay, so you're kind of like helping them make the lesson plan work. Right, cause like obviously the teacher can have the lesson plan and like it's like super simple. It's literally like like count by fives, like four plus three, you know. It's super simple. Like she could definitely teach that to everyone, but it's also like you have to think about the behaviors that come with each student. Like not every student can just sit there for like, you know, like whatever issue each individual student has like that's why there's so many staff members in support in that classroom so like when they divide it into groups we have to deal with their behavior slash like whatever they're dealing with in that moment and also just like help implement what the teacher was trying to teach the class you know because i feel like in a non-special needs class you don't need to do that one instructor has like 15 people, mm-hmm. kids or something. And every, just doing a every student can be independent, but it's not the case. You know, say you're assigned to one student. Are you trying to like let that student kind of independently do as much as he can or of she course. can yeah. and then step in only when like it's needed? Or are you kind of yeah, every yeah. second or just kind of... You want to make them be as independent as possible. So like you want to make them right. do as much work as they can. Um, and then you're just there to support them. In your classroom state, like how are they pretty like good now? Like after, you know, it's been a... Since nice. I've started working there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've definitely seen some improvements like throughout the whole class but there's also like external factors that you can't really like there's nothing you can do about it there's some students in the class that like have not only autism but like other conditions as well so like something may come up that is just like super abnormal that you just have to deal with that like affects their day-to-day you know so like you have to handle that because there's health complications too not just like yeah, and like obviously you have to prioritize health and safety as well as obviously trying to educate them. Do you like your job? Yeah, I like it. I mean, I've always liked working working with kids, you know. It's not something that I would necessarily, like for what I'm doing right now, like there's no way that I would want to like climb that hierarchy. It's not something that I would want to do personally. Uh, so it's just kind of like I enjoy it right now. I enjoy the students that I work with in the, like, at the school and the staff members. But it's not for, I guess, like, my job title specifically. It's not something that, like, in my specific field I want to, like, continue doing, you know? In education, and right now you're talking specifically about special needs education, like, what is the envelope you're trying to push? I mean, I guess definitely more focus and, like, support and, like, funding towards education. Because, like, everyone knows it's pretty, like, it's very under Like, any education. Yeah, I, yeah, any education, obviously. But, like, that in that bubble is special education, obviously. There's not a lot of money in it, which, like, doesn't make sense because everyone knows it's a very important thing to put funding in. And, I guess, raising more awareness and, like, how difficult it is in the classroom especially during pandemic there's so many external factors that like can contribute to like anyone's like nine to five job but also like kids have to deal with all these like external factors coming from someone who can like understand that as like an adult how can you expect a child to understand all that you know so like you never know what's going to happen so it's just like i wish there was just more focus on the future and that i feel like education Obviously, how parents raise their children is a huge effect, but also like education and like learning for kids literally changes your entire rest of your life. Right, especially in like public schools, like some students are literally raised in the classroom, you know, so it's like there's always going to be like very low income families that like, you know, are just struggling to survive when they go inside the classroom. They at least deserve like a level of education that this country can provide, but it's not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. essentially putting more funding in education as a whole, but also particularly special needs areas. Yeah. yeah. And just like, I guess just like raising awareness in how like important it is to educate 
the youth properly. Do you feel like you just like notice that at work, like day to day, or like, like why you don't do you know feel that you way? don't notice those things like when you're growing up. So like when you see it, at least from I guess like a staff member perspective, you can notice a lot of things that I don't know. There's a lot of little things that can structure kids' lives. I mean, they are the future, so it's just very important to give a little more focus to that demographic. Right. I I like I've heard that already before that like. Obviously, education needs more funding, all that. But, like, I can't tell you why. You know, like, I know that it's important, but I, you work in education. So, like, right. what are things that you notice that are, like, oh, you know, I need, they need this needs more funding? Like, I guess, like, one example off the top of my head is, like, in this moment, like, we're still dealing with COVID, right? So, like, you know, a teacher will get COVID and, like, okay, they need to find a sub. Oh. There's no subs. Why is there no subs? Well, they're not getting paid enough. You know, they have to find, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, like, one example that, like, is so simple in this current moment that, like, okay, well, like, obviously they can't be in the classroom. How are we going to solve this problem? Oh, well, let's get a substitute teacher. But, like, we're not going to pay you enough because who knows why. Yeah, there's not enough money to get right. it again. Right, and like, e even in like, you know, like special ed classrooms, you see some like really crazy like shit, you know? So it's just like, why would you want to deal with that with like minimum wage, you know? Because there's so many aspects that are going on in these like children's lives, like externally, like that when they go into the classroom, like you can be the best staff member, teacher, principal that you can be, but the factors that are around education and the school system, it's like, it limits you so much. So I'm curious though, because I guess like you're not technically employed by the the school you're employed by a third party that provides that service i guess so do you feel like because you get paid through that company right you know you're not a teacher in the school district which you know doesn't get as much funding as like a private company i guess do you feel like that helps i guess you with getting paid and like do you feel like it's the same funding or you know, you know what i mean like oh i see what you're saying no, in the sense that, like, maybe... So the funding is, first of all, different because, yeah. like, a school district is publicly funded versus, like, a company is, like, I don't know who... I guess, like, school employees get, like, technically, like, paid more, but, like, we... Really? But we know that, like, they could get paid way more than... You know what I'm saying? So, like, so in that aspect, yeah, there's been, like, a huge dilemma in, like, the San Francisco Unified School District with, like, they changed, like, some sort of timesheet system to where, like, a lot of people, a lot of members are, like, consistently not getting paid, like, on time. And, like, it's been, like, months and, like, it's been, like, a whole year. It's been, like, a really, really big very thing. Shitty, it's yeah. very shitty. It's not stable. So, like, I guess in my personal experience, it goes both ways. Surprised, though, because I thought you would say that, you know, as a private company, they, they're just more more efficient money going around. Right. I oh, thought wow. you would say your private company, like, doing that right. route makes and it better. I also forgot to add that, like, technically in my job description, I'm only supposed to be working with this one kid. But, like, I'm definitely not. Like, I'm working with every single student. I'll try to bring that up with them be like hey like i'm doing like so much more work the person who i'm talking to it's like not in their control to like increase the pay they can only do so much versus like because like they're not there to see it personally that's like going back to like if there was more exposure to like how things actually are like there would be more funding right. you know they're like oh yeah they don't need funding because of like oh it's it's fine you know sometimes i'm running the classroom you know like yeah like but the teachers, right the now. teachers gone. Like I have, yeah. the, I have the most experience in the staff in that classroom. So I am in charge of like. Running yeah, so you're essentially running a class. I have to, you know. Yeah. And like that's not recognized. What do you want to do? Stay in education, though. I don't know. Well, like that's a thing. Like, yeah, ideally, like if education was paid properly, of course, right. yeah. But like, it's not. You know, I just didn't know certain aspects of your job. Like, I knew the basics, but that's really cool. You do that every day, though. Like, because I mean, I don't see that on your social media, you know, like I don't I don't have a lens in that. Right. Um, yeah. So I don't fully know what you're doing. So, yeah, like, when we're hanging out, we're not <laughs> talking right. about that stuff a lot. So yeah. that's cool.